All right, guys, today we're here to discuss centralized power for LED lighting with experts from Sager Electronics and Advanced Energy. We're looking to learn more about the importance of horticultural lighting systems, current power methods, and alternatives that present indoor plant growers and LED light manufacturers with a wealth of benefits. We're joined today by Sager Power Sales Engineer, Rick Hauk, as well as Frank Cerulia, who's the Manager of Systems and Application Engineering over at Artisan, to discuss. So let's dive in. First, I'd like to address the market and the growing importance of horticultural lighting systems. So I'd say, Frank, why don't you kick us off and, and give us a little um, insight into how big this market really is and yeah. why it's becoming so important. Yeah, well, uh, actually, before we talk about horticulture, I, let's talk about data sentences. Everybody knows about the internet and how we're just taking off, right? So back in 2006, that industry saw that ramp in usage. They were using about 2% of all the U.S. Of our energy. Uh, but, you know, from there, they understood what needed to be done. They were doing it. They got better hardware, better software. So instead of going to 10 to 12% of the U.S. energy, they're floating around 4%. And it's steady because, you know, power supplies used to be 80% efficient. Now they're 96 and better. Now, horticulture, okay? In uh, 212, okay, uh, the energy use for horticulture lighting was about 1% of all the U.S., okay? So that's not too bad. 216, now the uh, Colorado, right? They allowed cannabis. Colorado now in 216 is using 2% of all the U.S., which is a, just Colorado. Wow. And now how many more states have legalized that? Or, you know, it's just ballooning. I would say that it, it has, I haven't seen any data, but they're probably using 12% or more of the, all the U.S. And they need to do something just like the data center guys did. One of the biggest things they've done is go away from HPS light and go to LED lights, okay? That really brought down the usage, you know, instead of climbing up. So they did a good job with that and they're continuing to do that. Uh, that's the one statistic is that in, in 217, all the lighting was like uh, six terawatts of lighting. Wow. If they would have used LEDs, it would have been about three terawatts of lighting. That's a half a million homes a year they could have, if they used LEDs. So it's the right direction. Uh, the next problem is, uh, as far as cost, there's all the HCA, the air conditioning, because all those lights in there are producing a lot of heat and that has to be taken care of. So there's a major part of their uh, bill and the percentage used in the US is for HICVCA, air conditioning. So we need to do something about that. So those are the two biggest curves that's gonna bring horticulture back down to a norm of maybe 8%, hopefully, you know. <laughs> But right now, like I said, I would say it's 12 and higher and climbing uh, if we don't do something. So, and some of those drivers are people who want to eat more greens, right? And right. so, and it's hard to really grow greens in the fields, especially with the climate the way it is nowadays. You know, so when the grocery store or McDonald's orders veggies, they may get 80% of what they ordered <laughs> because the other percent just went bad. And, you know, so a lot of folks are looking at indoor growing where they can control it, right? Mm -hmm. And so that's part of everything's going indoor. So now you have to try to get the heat out of the indoor. That's why air conditioning costs are going up. And that's the next biggest thing. Uh, the other thing is DOE trying to push everybody because they understand this. They want you know, farmers and growers to do something about it. Mm -hmm. you know, so that's one other thing. And then just because cannabis is being legalized, it's just grown so much. We have to do something. So how how big has the, how, how big has the market? So with, with all those things, how big has the market become? Right. Well, right now in twenty nineteen was like three point two billion. In twenty thirty, it'll be roughly twenty one billion. So wow. it's growing like a hockey puck. <laughs> you know, it's just uh, it's not just uh, exponential. No, it is exponential, not linear. <laughs> You know, so, and, and, you know, that's why we really have to do something about the energy usage in that. Uh, and also help the farmers in trying to grow more yield and, you know, in their products, especially when they start going indoor. Right. You know, just, it becomes a specialty when they go indoor. But with the climate, the way it's going, 
it is it is happening and it's going to happen more and more indoor growing right so with the indoor growing and and like all these vertical farms right what what are the key applications is is that it you know how does that work with plants and growing yeah so yeah that's the other thing when you go indoor a lot of them buy old factories and they convert them or uh, even uh, containers, you know, uh, ship containers, they try to do that. But in, in all those uh, in containers, you, you're worried about the heat. Okay, so you have to try to figure out how to get the heat out of that thing, right? That's one thing. In large areas, you don't want to just have one level uh, of grow. That's not much yield. But if you can go vertically, uh, now you can get a lot more yield. When you go vertically, these lights that are uh, at every level, they produce heat. And again, you have to try to get the heat out of there and to allow the, grow, the, the plants to grow. Otherwise, you're going to have short plants because <laughs> they're going to try to keep away from the heat. And so that's where LEDs come in. And then the other thing that I'm going to be pushing for as we talk is to remove the drivers. Because the drivers... You know, a 600 watt light, you have a 30 watt light bulb sitting there on top of your LEDs. So not only do you plants don't like that, but your LEDs don't like that to have extra heat on top of them. Right. So that, would you say that's the current method of, of power then? Yeah, correct. The current method is to have drivers. And so when you do vertical growing, you have to keep them further apart than you really need to, but because of the driver. So think of this uh, a light. You have a light you're going to plug in to the wall, 120. That goes to this driver, which is like a silver box. The That's in AC input. The output is like a 24 volt or 48 volt that drives the light. So you need a wire that goes to the light. So a wire that goes into the silver box, a wire that goes. And then you need another wire if you want to do dimming, if you want to change the light intensity. So this silver box has three wires going to it, <clears throat> and it produces heat. And it's about eight pounds for a 600 watt light. So if you have about an acre of area, it's about 200 feet by 200 feet, you got about 1,700 lights times 800, I mean, eight uh, pounds each. So think about the structure. <laughs> and then think about all that heat, 30 white light bulbs times 1,700, okay? And for the uh, grower to get that heat, extra heat out, it's a 15 ton AC that he needs on top of that. So he has eight pounds times 1,700 times a 15 ton AC he has to pay for for the structure, okay? And that is also the heat, but that's what's happening now. They, they have extra AC and they have all this wiring mess that they have to go to all the lights. And then the sea of green looks good until it gets to about where the driver is and then those plants take a dive. So you can, the plants may be five feet, five feet, all of a sudden four feet, five feet, because mm -hmm. they keep away from the driver area. So you lose in the sea of green yield, right? So, uh, but that's some. That's what is happening now, you know. So, and our company sold those drivers, and we keep hearing it's hot in there. It's hot in there. You, we, how we get the heat out, you know? Uh, and that's what I got our, our engineers to think about. So, you know, we we had a product that's. Design is, for is that where you guys really started? The design idea is basically companies coming to you to, to sort of look at it this our, way? Our customers complain. They don't, you know, it isn't, it's our customers. We put the drivers up and they're complaining. What, what can, how can we get the heat out? You know, mm -hmm. Can you give me a more efficient power supply? Well, yeah, yeah but you're still going to have heat no matter how efficient, unless it's 100%, but you're not going to get anything 100%. So, and then you still have the weight. You still have a, other all the wiring, you know? So that was their complaint, you know? Uh, and so, yeah, and not just one customer. Anyway. And like I said, we still sell drivers because if you have a small area, then yeah, it doesn't make sense to have a big system, but they need drivers for small areas. And even small areas, we've tell them, you know, take the driver, unscrew it. <laughs> it may not be kosher, but that's one way to get the heat out of little rooms, you know? Yeah, and, and we see some folks do that. Yeah. Rick, so. have you heard of those complaints over the course of, of the years as well? Absolutely. The, it's the individual drivers that Frank's talking about. Um, they they each take an AC input line, and with the IHP that we'll dive into, is in one centralized location. So then you've just got the DC wires running to the I guess 
um, almost like a panel of individual LED lights, all wired. And that's where the vertical side comes in. Um, and it's far more efficient. Uh, there isn't all the heat generating from the individual LED drivers in the space. And so the, that's, you know, probably the, as Frank said, the biggest part of it is getting rid of all the excess heat that's not wanted in the, in the grow room. How does the installation, how does the installation compare, right? Well, maybe we should talk more about the IHP then. I mean, as the alternative, because, you know, I, I love the story that you shared with us previously about how, how this came to be. And I know Brian alluded to it as well, you know, um, came from customers asking for it, right? And so maybe we should take some time to talk about this alternative and, and really uh, dive into that. Yes, uh, for, me, for the so when they were complaining, uh, you can think of a like I said, I, I talk, I'll talk about an acre just as comparison since we did a case study that was around an acre. Um, so within an acre, uh, all the wiring because you you mentioned how install right. So basically, you're you're wiring three wires to every driver, okay, right. and, and the complaints. So we had this IHP that was designed more for MRI machines, laser cutters big applications and th this product has these modules 3000 watt modules so you can think of them as zones uh because in the grow area they have t they tend to have zones so you're not powering all the up at the same time and killing circuit breakers <laughs> and there's eight modules per case yeah. in the 24000 watt unit and there's also a 12000 watt unit that will hold four modules Right, so so these could be considered a zone. So three thousand would go to five lights, and another three thousand to five. So so they can break them up, and at the same time, since we are going to drive these lights now, and the power supply now is outside the grow area, we just run. The driver comes out. The units need a forty-eight volts, and that's how we started initially. They had lights at forty-eight, and we would just run forty-eight volts to the lights. Uh, and since the product, the IHP wrote, sent the current to the lights and voltage, the IHP could also tell it what to do. And so we can have scheduling and dimming at the same time with the same wires, because if the at full load, if it wants 10 amps, we can say, here's only one amp, it's eight o'clock in the morning, they don't want much light. And here's nine o'clock, here's two amps for you. And we can control all that, no extra wiring. So instead of all these three wires going to every driver there's only two wires going to the lights and that's it you know so it's nice and clean for driving it's so much less cost when you have to buy plc controllers for all the dimming because it comes out of the ihp itself and so we tried it with the customer again we started with 48 and what we found was the 48 needs thick wires because uh, for 3000 watts you're about 50 amps and so they need the thick wires a lot of parallel so we convinced the, comp the customer to go to 250 volt lights because out there, the AC light, uh, cables that are used, they're, they're 300 volts. So we kept under there for safety so it's easy to find wire. We said, go to 250, now your wire size is very small. Installation becomes simple because you've you got thin wire running all over the place to the lights compared to the thick. And so that's what's been happening is uh, the light vendors that we have been partnering up with started with 48 and then they go to either 200 or 250. So now installation is simple. No three wires going to a, a driver, it's just two wires and we do it all, you know. Uh, and the ones that is doing this never go back because it kind of makes sense, you know, why go backwards, you know. Mm -hmm. And a lot of benefits. But if you have any other questions, uh, <laughs> I well, can keep you, talking. you mentioned a, you mentioned a case study up with the acre. Are there any other case studies of implement, uh, implementation that really stand out to you that that you think are, are worth noting here? Well, the I won't say a, a study because uh, you know you can't just say I'm going to test this place with drivers and I'm going to change it over, you know. Right. But I have a facility that uh, they have four rooms. They converted two rooms using the IHP, okay? Uh, the grower from a large area, the grower has had the best yields and best THC levels of, ever. And this is, uh, I wanna say from $40, billion $40 million company, this one farmer that we have that's changed over 
And now he's changing all of his other two rooms. So it's not a case, a case study, but uh, a case study is hard to do, you know, uh, in that way, you know. Uh, and then this, this one facility that is changing over, uh, they're actually going to do some data work from us because the IHP is good because, again, it goes centralized. You don't need all that AC, extra AC, because it's not in the grow area. Uh, but we're also working with another company called uh, Clarity IoT. And so we are going to start putting uh, sensors, like the light sensors, PAR, CO2, humidity, temperature. Uh, the idea is we'll grab all that data. We'll use Laurel wireless system since mm -hmm. it can go through walls, you know, because you don't need anything fast. You know, the temperature every, you know, f five minutes or a minute, it doesn't matter. So it doesn't have to be fast, but it needs to go through walls, steel and everything. So we'll use that approach with a gateway. And the idea is we'll save all this data. And then when a grower grows something very good, he can go back and say, what did I do? And if it's bad, he can go back. Where did I mess up? You know, what was wrong? You know, so not only are we going to help doing that, uh, we'll hopefully help with the yields. The other thing I even mentioned that's even bigger than all this is that when you use the IHP versus the uh, individual drivers, you'll save 17% in electrical costs. Yeah. And then one acre, some money. Yeah, uh, we did one acre, uh, like in the acre study, because think of all these drivers. These drivers are single phase. Basically, they go into the AC single phase. Their power utility is poor, so they have poor power factor. The IHP is three phase, so it's usually very clean power. So. In two years, we assume it'll pay back because you'll be saving about $100,000 a year on one acre. So you can, if you have a half acre, you can kind of half that, you know. Yeah. But you're going to save that money, you, you know, no matter what case study. Uh, you just look at the specs for the driver and the specs for the IHP and you'll save money in electricity. Okay. So a lot of indoor farming is done in old buildings. How does this play into like retrofitting these old buildings? Um, it actually plays very well, and we're actually making a product to help out with that. Because uh, when you have old buildings, there's so much current that you're allowed in the building. So when you start putting in equipment, the electrician says you get 10 amps of that, 5, and they start to end it up, okay? What's happening now, uh, especially in the flower area, when you have when the plants flower, they're only on for 12 hours, and then they have to be shut off for 12 hours on. And right now, it can be one IHP rack in one for one room and another one for room. So they get gigged for say 10 amps each one. Okay. So now they they got 20 amps less than they could use. We're coming up with a switch so that basically one IHP goes to the switch box. The switch box will switch it from room A for 12 hours and room B for 12 hours. That means he eliminates one of those IHPs. And that means he's got 10 amps to do something else in that building and not having to power the lights, you know? Because, you know, the old buildings, they could start to staff, you know, starve of how much current they can use. And then if they want to make gummies, they may not be able to make gummy bears because there's not enough current allowed. But it, with the switch box, we're hoping that they can eliminate a lot of the IHP so they can use other equipment and they can make their gummies, you know? <laughs> Just as an example. So it works real well with the... Uh, old buildings uh, and that's the reason we made this piece of equipment is because we heard that complaint that they only had so much current that they can go into the building with you know right. when, so when's that, that going to be available the end of the year. sorry oh, end of the, okay yeah. end of the year it'll be on the end of the year yes it was we actually showed it at the show we had, we had mj business last week so we, we showed that uh, and, and, that, you know, and that's so, the ITS, correct the right, ITS. That's the ITS. intelligent transfer switch I for intelligence. Uh, yeah. yeah. You know, we've talked a lot about um, cannabis growers, and I think it's important that we, you know, focus on them. But there's also the lighting manufacturers to consider as well. And, you know, as you're, you know, as we're talking to to those folks, you know, what do you, what would you say to them right now if they're, if they're, you know, dealing with the traditional method and we want them to switch over, you know, what, where's the ROI there? Uh, for me, uh, it's uh you're going to make more sales you know when you tell the farmer or the grower you're going to save 17 percent a year per acre um right away 
it's going to grab his attention, right? And when you tell him it'll pay for itself in two years, a driver will never pay for itself, okay? And so that's just the electricity, right? And then we tell him how it is easier to wire, okay? Uh, again, it's cost to the, the grower, right? That's less cost. Uh, the controls, when you talk about all the controls you have, how easy it is to maintain. Um, structure costs are going to be so much lower. Sometimes the light guy gets too uh, emotional about just selling his product and he doesn't see the overall picture. And it, it, he's not going to last because when he has a competitor that's looking at the whole picture and saying, you're going to do all this, you're going to save all this, this is going to be the best, you know, not just light, the cost of the lights, you know, and the system. Uh, so, you know, that's, you you will get a lot on return missing. And the thing is, they will pay for itself in two years. Dry will not, you know, so. And Nicolette, that's generally how we, I guess, go to market for the IHP is with the lighting manufacturers. Um, and then we kind of sell them on the IHP option instead of individual drivers, show them the ROI, all the benefits, um, the less equipment needed as far as as Frank said earlier, the thicker wire gauges, um, and then that's that's who kind of sells it to somebody that's going to be a grower. So it's important to get them on board. You know, it's important to educate, educate uh, uh, you know, the lighting manufacturers. Right. And, and, and word of mouth is actually starting to take off. Yeah. Uh, we had the small facility, uh, I mentioned it four rooms, he, he was visited by uh, a facility that's out of Colorado, and they have like 300 dispensaries, a very large facility. He went and visited the, the, uh, the facility that had the IHP. I got a call a few days after, and he goes, I can advertise for you. And I said, who's this? He goes, I just visited the, that plant. It's the best way to go. And I said, okay. And he goes, I'm going to buy 600 of these things. <laughs> oh, well, how many? <laughs> uh, I mean, uh, we got a very big deal by somebody coming and visiting uh, the setup. Yeah, just the one. Okay. So it speaks for itself. I mean, the the output really speaks for itself. Yeah, it's, it's, I kept I keep calling it a make sense solution. Yeah, um, yeah, and you know, at the show, I, people come by and say, "You need lights? You need lights?" Uh, <laughs> we don't sell lights, right? <laughs> and we, they could either say no, yes, and when they say no, I say, "Well, we don't sell them, but." Go find a driver up there. Right. And then they get, oh, what, what are you talking about? Uh, <laughs> you know, we can save you money by not having, and then they get, and if they want lights, I, again, they say, I don't sell them, but go find a driver. <laughs> it gets their attention, and especially when you say the drivers are coming out, the grow area is going to be cooler, and all of a sudden they want to know, you know? Uh, and then, yep, yep, give me, give me a card. <laughs> so it was a good show in that way, you know. That's good. Educating. Yeah. So how is Sager, how does Sager help the efforts to support the, the end customer in, you know, addition? So Sager Electronics is a, I don't want to say broadline distributor. We, we really focus on uh, interconnect and power and thermal products. And we've got, uh, our, our headquarters is out of Middleborough, Massachusetts, and we have a facility in Carrollton, Texas um, that does the value add. And so by value add, that is we, we stock all the different individual modules for the IHP, as uh, we talked about, that are rated in different voltages and different current levels. Um, and so then we assemble that unit, test it, and, and ship it wherever it needs to go. Um, so as I guess then you would say a stocking distributor. Um, and then there's also the artisan facility in Austin, Texas that supports our facility in, in Carrollton. Um, and if there's any kind of issue whatsoever with a module uh, or, or a unit, um, it can be sent back to Carrollton and a replacement can be sent back out the next day or, or to Austin. So the, the, the support is definitely there because it's, it's, 
absolutely important that these growers can continue to grow and not have really any downtime. Yeah, yeah I, the I next day is very important. Yeah, the plants can't wait. <laughs> right. No. Uh, so uh, we make sure the equipment's out there the next day. Uh, so it's nice so that it doesn't happen that often, but you know, we're there. Yeah, and and um, I think maybe we should talk on it that with this approach, I mean, th these are completely <laughs> hands off. Once they're set up and running and programmed, <laughs> um, and Frank, you can dive in a little bit deeper, but but they're really. Once, once you set these things up and, and they're running, you don't really have to touch them until you're ready to harvest whatever it is you're growing. Mm -hmm. No. That's good. Yeah. I mean, some of the farmers uh, do touch it a lot because, uh, especially like I said, the guy that grew the best, he would go out there measure the lights almost every day, look at his plants, measure the light, come back and then tweak the, his schedule a little bit, you know? But it, 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 the system's easy enough to go in and and tweak it, his schedule, you know? So he, he became his own feedback loop just because he wanted us just exactly. But that's part of what we'll, why we wanna get some more sensors in there so that we can measure par. And then if the cu uh, customer does want a feedback loop, we can give him a feedback loop so the lights change depending on what he wants for par. That's right. Yeah, so that's also a big like, thing that's that's like, easy, to, easy to configure and modify, right, for them, you know? Yes. So that's, that's important. Yeah, you know, yeah. You know, so, uh, and I say we're working with this Clarity company, and I think our dashboards are going to be much be better in the future, uh, because you know we're in it now, and might as well grow with the with the growth. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, and so that's why we're going to move on to with the sensors, um, and we also have another product that's called the LCM four thousand. Instead of these three thousand watt modules, it'll be four thousand watt power supplies, um, and we're hoping to get the price down to me, you know, by forty percent maybe of what is current, uh, just because we're seeing now what's really needed, and so now we're making new equipment based on what we see and what we're learning, you know, to hope. And you know, share with everybody, and you know, the idea is to get the energy cost and the energy usage down, right? right. Like the data centers. Right. <laughs> exactly. That was a that was a great introduction. I see the connection. Yeah. <laughs> it was yeah. a story, full circle. <laughs> yeah. You know, so Frank and and Rick, is there anything that we should be asking that we're not? Uh, about this topic, I mean, I mean, I'm sure you get a ton of questions over at Sager, a ton of questions over at Artisan. What you know, is there any recurring theme that you feel like we're not asking that we should be? Well, the biggest one is is for lighting manufacturers and then the growers is is how are they powering their lights? Um, if if they are using individual drivers, we can show them. You know, in hard copy, how much savings that they can get. Like Frank said, if you've got a one acre plot, it, it can pay for itself in a couple of years. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, I guess that's that's the big one is, is just find out what they're currently using and introduce the IHP. Yeah. Why do you want heat in your grow area? Extra heat. <laughs> right. I, I'm all for somebody to say, you're not doing it right because of this. I'm waiting for it because of this. Uh, because I want to hear because of this, because maybe we can make it even much better, right? So, but yeah, the biggest question is why you keep buying drivers and putting the heat in the grow room? Yeah, uh, and, and the grow why industry. Why don't you say electricity? <laughs> and the non-traditional grow industry is still, I think, probably in its infancy. And I think we're going to see more and more, not only regionalized, but local uh, to municipalities because it's faster to market, um, organic. And I think that's the big push right now um, that, you know, once everything starts to get back to normal, hopefully um, from COVID and restaurants will have fresher produce. Um, and grocery stores will be able to offer fresher produce. And it's, I think it's gonna change the landscape. Yeah, because I didn't even go back to containers sales because now with the containers, the ship containers, 
you just have to have the lights inside. The IHP can be outside, uh, just like your cable company has the boxes outside. You know, they're not that expensive. You just buy this outside box from the IHP there, you know, centralized. And now all that heat's out of that container. So now container makes more sense uh, to use. So they can be located, you know, behind a bunch of restaurants or, you know, but they can be very local. And so you, you get good yields because now, you know, the climate doesn't matter. Uh, insects, you know, you know, you're not outside. So right. you don't have to yeah. the chemicals to do that. So you get a much better product and controlled. So, and that's coming. Fresh fruit. Yeah. <laughs> And more organic, grown like right behind the restaurant, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, in these containers. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. crazy. Containers don't cost that much nowadays. If you can get one. If you can get, yeah. 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 <laughs> so, so Rick, where, where, where can we find more about the IHP? Uh, you can definitely find it on either one of our websites, artisan.com or, or sager. Uh, Power.sager.com. Um, just type in IHP and you'll get the launch page and it's all the information's right there. So, and if anybody needs, we can, we can get application notes, um, every bit of information that's required. <laughs> and you can't see that. Sorry, actually there's, a, sorry, actually there's a couple of YouTube ones out there too. On yeah. IHP, so through YouTube. Sorry. <laughs> no, no, no worries. Yeah, but I was going to say the test, the testing that that Sager does was really coming coming handy, right? The assembly and the testing too. Absolutely, yeah, and that's the whole goal is to be able to turn these rather quickly. You know, and I mean, worldwide we understand there's there's electronic component shortages, um, but we're trying to stay ahead of the curve as much as possible, and and keep inventory on the shelf. Frank, is there anything else you'd like to leave us with no, before we I, let you guys go? No, just that the Hurdle Ultra guys need to do something like the data center guys and start curbing the power usage, you know? And I think centralized power is one way to start, you know? So, my two cents. Absolutely. Well, thank you. Thank you so much for taking the time to chat with us about this today. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Stay safe.